Hello everyone. I am in a great town called Denison, Texas. Uh, this is just right over the Red River into the Texas side. And uh, Denison has a lot of ties to my family. My mother was born in this town along with a lot of my aunt and uncles. My grandmother used to live here. My uncle dude lived here. And I have quite a few grandparents that are all buried in a different cemetery here in Denison. And at this cemetery, I may even have a great grandpa. Oh no, I guess it'd just be grandpa buried here. We're not really sure. It's in an unmarked grave. So, but my mother uh, was told by my uncle that she thinks it's this cemetery. Still got to research that and figure that out. But we are in Oakwood Cemetery and it was built in 1872 is when I guess they started burying people here. And we're here to visit a very famous, a gr well, the grave is kind of famous around here, but he has some famous, a famous relative. And so we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna show you some of the other old graves. Yes, it is 100 degrees today, but there's no sun. So bear with me. So there's the sign that says 1872. Oakwood Cemetery and great state of Denison. Now the one thing I forgot to tell you about Denison is Denison has a very famous person that was born here in this town and we have some great historical sites including his birth house and some statues and memorials and so most people who come to Denison will find out that this is the town where President Eisenhower was born. He spent his two, two first two years of his life here before they moved to Abilene, Kansas. Now I've been to both places in Abilene and here, and they're great places to see. And so, uh, so there's a tie. So we're walking up on a grave that has a very famous, famous last name. So this tomb stone right here, he is the grand nephew of President George Washington. See, told you a famous relative. So this is the grave of L.A. Washington Jr. and his wife, Martha A. So it says here, grandnephew of George Washington, who has been the guardian of L.A.'s father and was a doctor, came to Texas in 1949 with the inauguration suit, personal letters of George Washington, and his wife came from, note, the West Virginia family. Um... So this is the grave of the grand nephew of George Washington. L.A. Washington Jr. Born in 1820, died in 1890 something. <laughs> and I guess this is Martha's grave. Actually, no. The first one I was showing you was the wife. This one right here is the nephew, George the nephew of George Washington, grandnephew. And it says that George Washington had been the guardian of L.A.'s father. And he was a doctor who came to Texas. So this nephew was a doctor when he came to Texas. Anyway, that is one of the famous graves I wanted to show you here. Pretty good bragging rights when you can say you're the grandnephew of President George Washington, who is the one of the founding fathers and first president of the United States of America. So let me walk around and see what else we can find. All right, time to find me a shade tree. <laughs> it's hot in Texas. Look at these, some of these really old graves. Pretty cool. When it cools off, I'd like to come back and spend a little more time here. I've spent some time with here, here, but I'd like to bring you guys all back. But man, it gets hot. So let's see what this little grave over here is. Wow, that one's cool. Born in 1888, died in August of 1888. Oh my gosh. They were just a few months old when they died. Ooh, now here's something. This is J.R. Jordan. 
and he was in the Civil War. He was a Confederate of the 32 Kentucky Infantry. Now, right below him is a Floor D Lancaster, and he was in the World War II. But, uh, yeah, Confederate soldier. Now, remember, people, we are in the state of Texas, and you will mostly see Confederate cemeteries in Texas. As you get to more northern states, you will see more northern ones. Here's another one. He was in Company B of the... M-O-S-M-G Cavalry. So he was a cavalry officer. I'm assuming he was an officer. A cavalry man. There's a great song called I Want to Join the Cavalry. Oh my gosh. If you've ever, never heard that song, you need to Google it. It's great. I Want to Join the Cavalry. So. Let's see what else I can find. Without melting. Oh my gosh. Look at this one. Hidden into the trees. Oh, that almost looked like a little baby too. It was. Born in August of 1882, died in 1882. Guys, I found another one. Hold on. Also in the infantry, can you see it? It says, uh, his last name, uh, Joseph, I think it's Joseph, Joshua, no, Joshua Williams, uh, Company D, 16 Illinois Infantry. Illinois. Now, that might be a northerner one. I stand corrected. Because I think Illinois was part of the north, not the south. And I would know, because I study a lot of Civil War history. Yeah, that's kind of cool. He probably moved here after the war. And then uh, was buried here. Look at that. The only kind of plants down here that survive very well <laughs> in the drought and the heat. So, like I said, this cemetery is very old. like there was one other cool grave that I found out here last time I was here. Where was it? Good question, Tanya K. Good question. Now this is always sad to me. When you see them fall down and they don't take, no one takes the time to pick them back up. Or to glue them back on. Look at that hand. Whoa. So down in the comments below, tell me what the creepiest cemetery you've ever been to was. Or tell me what the coolest cemetery you've ever been to was. There's got to be some cool ones. Ah, here it is. The plaque on this tree. I knew there was something else. I stopped here one day just to read this plaque. And I don't know if I can read it now, but I'll try. It says, because we couldn't find where you were buried. James Arnie Robert Longmere, born on June 20th, 1848, died on June 20th, 1848. So this was a baby. Our brother George and sister Darlene, Brenda, Vicki, and Peggy, see you in heaven. So they couldn't find the grave, so they just uh, mounted that to a tree. Now, how cool is that? Very cool. Born in 1948. Y'all, I'm melting, I'm melting. Does that remind you of uh, some TV, some movie? Oh my goodness. The things I will do for my YouTube channel. Look at that one. 
I love this one. I like to come back and spend some more time here. I've spent some time here already, but here's another Civil War soldier. So, this is S.S. Clark, 1828 to 1904. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the car uh, with my mom. We're having a mother-daughter day. She sits in the car. It's too hot. And I walk around the cemetery. We were going to a movie, but we changed our mind. Um, yeah, that one's cool too. But I really wanted to show you George, the ne great nephew of George Washington. Great is a great grand nephew. So I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to drive around. If I see any more historical markers, there's the right there. Can you see it? This is where the grave I started at was. And if I see anything else, I will stop, and take a couple more pictures. All right, so I'm back in the car and I'm going to drive around and see if I see anything else we need to take pictures of. Right here looks to be another Civil War grave. So, this is what you do when it's 104. You drive around and look and see what you can find. Okay, y'all, I found another one. This is E.F. Bush. Um, he was in the Kansas Cavalry. Born in September 10th, 1840, and died in 1918. Now, the Civil War started in 61, 40, 50, yeah, so he would probably been in the Civil War. And it says he was, Kansas Cavalry. But that could have been later, that's why I was doing the math there. But yeah, there's another. Now, if he was in the Kansas Cavalry, 2nd Kansas Cavalry means this is a northerner, probably. Because Kansas was a northern state, mostly. Except for the guerrillas, they would come over from, but they were mostly from Missouri, so... Anyway, that's cool. And look at this one. That one's neat. So we're still in the car because it's like much cooler in here. <laughs> but it's a neat little old cemetery. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. <laughs> so we're driving over here in the edge of the cemetery. And it looks like the city of Denison has put their little headquarters right over here. Look at these big old pillars. They don't have anything on them. Look like they, well, they probably had a fence around there, Mom. See, these pillars probably had a rope fence around it at one time. So I'm here in the back side of this cemetery, just kind of searching these back here. We were trying to look for the area that might have some, um, where they might have put the people that didn't have tombstones. But when I'm out here, I thought I'd take a few pictures. Died in 1911. So, that's what I'm doing. Here's a guy that was in World War One, U.S. Army, private. So back here in the back of the cemetery, it looks to be some kind of big old field. Now, my uncle said that if this is the right cemetery, there was a field next to it that had all the unmarked graves. 
but I don't know because I can also see something looks like a goal like it could have been a abandoned soccer field but uh, I don't know I'm not going to go down there and find out but that's a possibility it's all fenced in So if this is the right cemetery, and this might have been the field that they put the unknown people, I could have a grandpa. I don't know. I'll have to spend some more time researching on ancestry. I could even be in the wrong cemetery. So, we don't know. I'd have to talk to my uncle. Oh, that's a pretty one. He's a Vietnam veteran. See, I just have a thing for graves that are veterans. I don't care which war it is. Um, here's another Vietnam vet. Bobby Don Cobb. Now that's interesting. What's interesting about this one is... He was born in 1936, but he died August 8th, 1972, which kind of makes me wonder if he died in action in Vietnam, because those are some of the years that the Vietnam War was going on. I think that might have been the year they pulled out, or maybe the next year was. I, I was only a couple years old, so I don't remember for sure, but yeah, he could have died over there in Vietnam, or died shortly after coming back. A true hero. See, you just never know what you'll find when you're out searching through the cemetery. In Texas, in July. It's hot. Here's a Korean War veteran. Also a Coleman. Must be all part of the same family. Ooh, look at this one. I might end it with this one because it's extremely hot out here. But look at that. Look at that, that face is almost creepy when you look from the side. And it's like into the ground. But I mean with the cracks and stuff it almost looks skeleton like creepy but cool look at that Ooh. well y'all make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see other cool stuff especially stuff from cemeteries so like subscribe follow i think you'll enjoy my channel i'm learning Every day how to make better chan better videos and I hope you enjoy it. It's back.